Hey guys and girls, my name is Alan and today I have some more Rainbow Six Siege gameplay for you to enjoy. Uh, playing Terrorist Hunt on the map, uh, well, Hereford Base, I don't know what it's called. Um, basically, I'm in a friend's party so you might hear some chatter in the background, uh, but unfortunately I wasn't recording my own voice because I didn't set up the game properly. So yeah, that's a fail on my behalf, but I wasn't talking to the, uh, the team in a way because like I said, I was... Well, I was half doing a live commentary, but I didn't record myself anyway, so it's a moot point. But so you might you might pick up some chatter in the background from my uh, from my teammates. Uh, but obviously they're not talking to me; they're just talking to each other. So I'm sort of just just there, really. I probably could have muted them, but you know, it's it's, it's what it is. Uh, I left it on because they were talking about the game, and they did throw out some hints every now and then. So that was that was kind of useful, and I probably should have joined them, but. You know, feeling lazy, and it wasn't really my party as a friend's party. Anyway, enough about the party chat and lack of communication, whatever. So, I never really talked about um, my feelings on this game. So, the Rainbow Six Siege is ending very, 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 very soon. Um, in fact, I think at the time of me recording this, it's probably already finished. Uh, I mean, the the commentary, not the not the gameplay, obviously. Um, and I'm quite glad that I played it because it's quite an interesting game. It's I don't know if the word realistic is is appropriate, but it it tries to be realistic. Um, everything you do is you can't. It's put it this way: I jumped in playing this beta, having just played Black Ops Three, and it was worlds apart. It was so so different. You move a bit slower. You don't reload as quick. Um, everything is. Like I said, I don't know if it's realistic or not, but everything is just really slow paced and you can't, I don't think you can run and gun in this game. Um, I was only playing against bots, but it felt so, like, it was just really hardcore. And this is just playing on normal difficulty. I can only imagine how hard it is to play on, you know, the realistic difficulty, which they have as well. Um, or whatever they call it, but it's, I'm playing on normal and I feel it's quite hard as it is. And I, I, you know, I consider myself a pretty decent player in terms of FPS games. Uh, I'm not new to the genre at all. I've been playing it for many, many years. And I've put in hundreds of hours uh, across multiple titles of, you know, Call of Duty, Medal of Honor, and, and Counter-Strike, and, and all the rest of it. So, I, yeah, I don't think I'm a beginner to the game. Or th uh, well, I'm, I don't think I'm a beginner to the, to the genre, but I still feel there was a, an adjustment to be made in playing this game. So, like I said, it's very slow... Not very slow paced, but the way to succeed is you take your time and you be a bit, you know, be a bit tactical about the game. And I think that's a good thing. Um, there are too many FPS games out there, like Call of Duty, and even though Battlefield is a separate franchise, you know, in recent times, people have said that Battlefield and indeed Medal of Honor as well have sort of tried to copy the fast paced nature of Call of Duty. And I think that's a shame because I do appreciate that games have different. Yeah, styles of play and, and a different pace and I like that because obviously when I go from playing Call of Duty to playing Battlefield I don't want Battlefield to be exactly the same as Call of Duty otherwise what's the point of me playing a different game you know so yeah I like that games have their own have their own thing and Rainbow Six Siege definitely has its own flavour I mean yes it's an FPS shooter yes you can customise your loadouts and stuff like that but the weapon handling the equipment the the reliance on team placement you know during games and the communication is very very important and like I said even though we're just playing against bots on normal difficulty you know you do have to put in a bit of effort in order to succeed you can't well it's unlikely you'll be able to do it <laughs> one man army solo you know Rambo gung ho style I mean I, I don't know if you've seen my uh, failing attempts at trying to play this game mode solo but it was shocking. I did not last very long at all, and you know, like I said, I'm not a beginner to this game genre. So for me to fail that hard is is it's quite, you know, it's quite puzzling to me. But at the same time, I understand why I'm failing because it's a different game that you need to learn. Um, so yeah, as you can see, uh, we've found one of the bombs, and my teammate has planted a diffuser, and currently one of my other teammates is currently te uh, teabagging <laughs> one of my. <laughs> one of my other teammates so yeah that's that's funny don't know why but that, that is funny um so yeah as i said it's very not i keep saying it's slow paced but i play it slow paced which just because you, you do have to be tactical about this game you do take damage from uh, enemies quite easily um 
I think their aim's a bit weird because it's basically auto aim. They walk into a room, they don't even have to look at you, but they can well, point their gun at you. So um, I've seen it in a couple of kill cams where they'll just they'll just walk through a doorway, even though you're sitting in a corner behind like a table or something, they'll just zoom in on you straight away. And even though there's a delay between the time that they see you and fire, their accuracy once they've found you is more or less 100%. They're not going to miss and uh, I, I don't know, I think that needs a bit tweaking because it, it, that's definitely not, you know, obviously that's not realistic at all because enemies normally would have to find you the same way that you'd have to find them, sweep corners or, or use, you know, cameras or technology or whatever. Uh, and that leads me nicely onto the next topic. So the equipment in this game is really fun. Um, you've got things like flashbangs, grenades, you've got breaching charge, you've got EMP grenades and each does what, you know, what it says it does. And there's also these little spy drones that you can send out to go under doorways and scout locations. You can even tag enemies. I don't think the tag lasts for a very long time, but let's say you're working in a, a really strong party. If one person hangs back, uses their drone, they can tag up all these enemies, find all the bombs, you know, sort of call out booby traps or, or barbed wire, things like that. And so that that's really good. That's really fun to do. And it gives everyone a specific role in the team as well. I think that's what this game does really well, is because each specialist has their own ability. So if you play to your strong strong points and you know the rest of your team back you up and you work together as one cohesive unit, I think that's where this game really shines among other uh, FPS titles. Um, f flashbangs and uh, grenades, obviously they just work as they do. EMP grenades, they're useful because they take out things like, uh, like uh, C4 traps, I think they're called demo charges or something, I, I can't remember what they're called, but they destroy those in one hit. So if you walk into a room or down a corridor or something and you see a few of these lying around, instead of shooting them manually and giving away position potentially, you can just throw down an EMP grenade and it will take them all out. And you even earn points for it, so that's good. Uh, there's a lot of weapons to choose from in this game and I think they all feel quite unique. Um, I haven't had a chance to use all of them obviously. Um, because it's only a beast and also because I've only played a few matches but the weapons that I have used uh, even though they're in the same category they all sort of behave in a different way and they all look really good as well um, the iron sights and you know just the animations for when you're reloading or just running around and stuff like that it's all really good so uh, props to Ubisoft for managing to get that you know sort of decent <laughs> um, I know that they've not always been uh, acclaimed with having the best finishings in games but having said that um, I definitely feel that even though this is a beta and they've, been, they've had loads of betas for Rainbow Six Siege I, I still feel it's not as polished as it could be you know and that's slightly worrying because as I said the game is coming out uh, in a few days time uh, in fact more or less straight after this beta finishes so I, yeah I'm a, I'm a little bit worried about that I don't know if it's just because the beta is like a, a, an older version of the game but it doesn't bode well the fact that this beta, the, the beta that they've used to basically advertise the game at this point it might as well just be called a demo because it's so close to re uh, release date um, and so it should really shine as opposed to you know ha finding little bugs and, and stuff like that in the game uh, what else can we talk about so yeah breaching charge that's a really cool addition to to the FPS genre I think um, the fact that you can actually breach windows doorways and certain walls in a game especially if you're playing online I think if you communicate with your team and sort of plan your attack around a breaching charge or something like that that is really fun really cool um, and I really enjoy doing that and you can proper like breach a window jump through it just like in the films and it's so cool I definitely love using the breaching charge um, so each ca like I said, each character does have a specialist ability. Uh, attacking and defensive have slightly different abilities, um, obviously for their specific roles in the game. Um, and I've only really used one or two. Um, and the thing about being such a low level rank is that you sort of have to just rely on being a generic soldier and then just picking an ability to use, but you don't quite get the full benefits of being one of the special specialist characters, if you will. Um, map design, uh, I've, like, there's only a couple of maps in the beta um, and I don't know if there's going to be more in the full game, I'd hope there would be but I don't know if there's going to be more in the full game but like I said each map is really detailed and there's a lot to, not necessarily a lot of scenery but there's a lot of like like corners, corridors, doorways, windows that you need to sort of get to grips with in order to 
be able to call out enemies or to breach rooms and whatever successfully. Another nice thing about the map that I've noticed is that each one has a day or night version. So, I mean, obviously I don't know how much of a difference it would make playing against bots, but when you're playing against human opponents in uh, player versus player modes, I think having a day-night cycle, not cycle, I mean, you can only be day or night, it can't, it doesn't change halfway through, that would be really cool, but it doesn't change. Uh, I think that would be quite interesting, because obviously at night time, harder to spot enemies, and it might open up a few more, you know, tactical options in terms of sneaking, uh, or, you know, obviously if you breach a window, then, you know, you can see in, but it's hard for them to see out, sort of thing. Um... And there's also, I've even seen a couple of foggy maps as well, so that was really quite atmospheric. Um, but I can't remember if that really had an impact because once you get in the building, obviously there's no more fog, so it's just obviously, again, playing against bots doesn't really have the same effects as playing against humans. Um, hmm, what else is there to talk about? I had loads that I was going to talk about, but I think I might have covered most of it now. So, equipment, weapons, map, specialists. Uh, yeah, so like I said, communication is very important in this game. Um, hmm. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. Th this is a good point. So, as you can see, I'm sort of struggling to, to find a topic to talk about, and I think one of the things that this game doesn't do well is that some matches can last for quite a long time. Uh, even if we're playing against bots, as as I'm doing at the moment, some of these games can drag onto nearly 20 minutes, and I feel that's because of the way the game is. Like I said, it's very methodical. You need to you need to sweep every single room. You need to be really careful about you know turning corners and facing enemies because it is really easy to take damage. It is really easy to to die, and once you go down once, that's it. Um, you can only be revived once. After that, you die like for the rest of the game. So the more players you lose, the slower you have to pay just because you have to be so much more careful about staying alive. And I think that's a real shame. I know. They're trying to make it so that, you know, you can't run around like a crazy man. Get, you know, go down, get picked up, go down, get picked up, go down, get picked up. But I feel maybe one life isn't enough because there are two bomb sites and the enemies do respawn a few times. It's not just a set number of enemies within the building. It's a, it's a set number of enemies throughout the entire map and they can respawn as well and they can approach from outside the building into the building. And so I don't know how I feel about having one one down only because, like I said, once you go down, then you know once you die permanently, you need to just spectate, and that can be incredibly boring. And then obviously it makes it harder for the rest of the team, and they play slower, and it just makes the game even even worse to just just sit there and do nothing. And I think that's the same with um, not quite the same in multiplayer, but th it has the same issues. Um, because it's not quite a fast-paced game and you do have to be careful about how you approach things I feel that unless you're in a firefight which only lasts you know could last anywhere between a few seconds to maybe you know 20 seconds at most because obviously no one's gonna be engaged for that long and then after that 20 seconds is up the rest of the time is just like I said checking corners sweeping you know sweeping rooms blah 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 and it it, so it has its moments, but it's not always a fun game to play. Um, I think I read something somewhere where someone mentioned that the game itself is made up of small moments. Small, enjoyable moments. And I can really relate to that. I think whoever said that is pretty much bang on. Um, I mean, yeah, a terrorist hunt, if you're playing with a, a full squad of friends and you're all communicating, then I guess it's a bit more enjoyable than playing as a, as a lone wolf within a, you know, a lobby of strangers because then you do miss out on half the fun. Because as I said, communication and execution of tactics, that's where the fun lies in this game. But there are not many moments where you need to do that. Planting a bomb, defusing a bomb, yes. But when it comes to just everyday gameplay, you know, in player versus player there's not a great deal of that to do so I don't know maybe I don't know perhaps there should be a time limit on certain things maybe there shouldn't be respawning enemies or maybe you should get another chance if you do go down you know a second time because as I said I mean this game has its highlights but they're far and few in between there's not like I couldn't sit and play this game all day long um, because it just it doesn't appeal to me as much I mean it's I'd say in terms of FPS games that are existing at the moment, it's an even slower paced game than Battlefield, and I feel Battlefield for me is already quite slow. I mean, I, 
I just I don't know if this game is fun enough to play all the time. It's probably a game that's you can pick up and play with your friends every once in a while, but as for a you know a long gaming session, I just don't I don't see myself personally playing it. and so I don't know if, if I'm gonna get the game at all now. Um I mean I did enjoy the beta, I had fun, but like I said, I just can't see myself playing this long term. And it will be really interesting to see how the competitive players, you know, like the pro scene, um, handle this game because I think maybe if if they can, you know, um, if they enjoy it, then obviously the game is going to survive a little bit longer. But if they don't enjoy it, then I can't see the normal public players playing this game indefinitely, especially given, you know, the fact that it's not a perfect game. There are bugs, there are glitches. So, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, gameplay is over now, so quite a long commentary about my thoughts on the game. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider tapping that like button, and until the next one, uh, take care.